If you're looking for something for high school history that is different than a traditional textbook or something to supplement what you're already planning, take a look at History Detective from Critical Thinking Company. There are two versions. There is a U.S. history version, there are two books for it, and then a world history. Again, two books. It's supposed to be about a semester each. World history is suitable for grades 6 through 12, they say, and U.S. history is for grades 8 to 12. My daughter is a 10th grader, and she is using them this year, the U.S. history ones. These books will cost you about $35 from each, from Rainbow Resource and Critical Thinking Company. Critical Thinking Company will often run sales, especially um, during the summer leading up to the school year. So you can check out for that. And I think not always, sometimes they run a thing that if you, when you log in to, or when you go to their site, if you sign up for their email list, you can get a coupon. So when I do these um, curriculum spotlights, I have found for me that the best way to decide if I want to, if I'm interested in a curriculum, is to sit down with a friend who's using it. I can hold on to the book, I can look through it, I can ask questions, I can hear what they like and don't like about it. Unfortunately, I can't do that with you. So this is my best way to do it. After I do the talking, at the end I will turn the camera down and we will look into it and I'll go through it with you. If you have any questions about this, make sure you leave it down in the comments. And if you are curriculum shopping for the new year school year, I have a um, full playlist with um, all my curriculum spotlights, so go check them out. So this year for history, we started out that this was going to be kind of a supplement and Crash Course's U.S. History Curriculum, which is a free one that you can find if you Google just right, <laughs> um, was going to be her spine. But as the year went on, she really enjoyed this one. So we switched things up and now this is her spine and then we supplement with it, um, with other things. So each lesson has a short-ish reading, two to three pages usually, and then there are questions to follow. There are usually nine multiple choice type questions, um, and then there's a written response one. I will vary things. I don't usually ever do both of both types of question. Um, we usually just pick one. And then every few lessons there are different type of reviews, and then there's some just different bonus activity pages throughout the books as well. Generally, she completes one lesson a day, roughly. Um, okay. That's kind of been the average pace. And each lesson takes about 15 minutes, depending on what she's doing in it. And that includes the reading and the answering the questions. One thing I like about this one is that um, with the questions, under each one, there is something that says which sentence best supports the answer. So while the questions aren't, they don't always come directly out, it's not a matter of like just looking and finding the sentence that will give you a straight answer. Sometimes they have to kind of sense, they have to figure out what it's saying and then kind of twist to get the answer. But I love that, that put, they put that in there so the student is forced to really think about what, what the question is asking and if that sentence really does answer the question. Now, I don't always have her do that because she generally does well and she generally gets the answers right. If she misses answers, I do have her correct the answer and go back and find the sentence that supports it. And the written ones, sometimes I will have her do them orally and sometimes I will have, if I'm not having her write it, sometimes I'll just have her do it orally. First one covers from colonial era colonial era to reconstruction and then the next one starts from there so it does a good job of roughly um breaking the year and a half it actually starts with so the first one um it, it's the the beginning of the colonial era but it doesn't just jump straight into like the colonies um I like that it um, starts with 
people who are actually living here first. <laughs> and, um, and then it will go in and introduce how those, type, those groups were displaced. The graphics are really good in here. I think the maps and charts um, are very informative. The illustrations and paintings are well chosen. Um, yeah, I think the maps, the maps especially, I have found very helpful for organizing the information that they're learning. And there are a lot of maps included, um, especially like in the colonial era when the lands were changing. I hate to say ownership, but ownership. Um, so the different groups who were here first, and then um, the different countries who own different parts and stuff. It was really, it's been really helpful. So some of the pros about the book, um, the, the sometimes they'll take an angle. So this is a totally made example, but so instead of saying, look, here's the details of this battle of the Civil War, it might take and talk about the technology that was involved in that war, or um, the slaves who were fighting in that battle, or you know something that's just a, still deals with me a bit, but is a bit of a side topic or a trail. I really like that about the book. Um, because, you know, by the time they're in high school, they probably have a decent grasp of the major events. You know, if you're, if you do story, you know, a cyclical history program, for example, you've probably been through it twice by now. And so they have those details of the big things. So let's examine kind of the things that's, that go around that main event. Um, I really like that each lesson is short and focused. So instead of, you know, one chapter that might cover everything you need to know about some major battle or something, there is, you know, it's more broken up than that. Um, in the beginning, when they talked about the different colonies, so for the southern, there's a couple chapters on colonies, and so they talk about the location, so for Southern colonies, there's location, who settled in Virginia, who settled the other Southern colonies, what the government looked like in those, um, economy, and that's all. And so then those questions, you know, will obviously deal with just directly those. And um, again, then with the New England, so, and then the chapter after, the lesson after that was um, about a need for labor, the servants and slaves, and why why we have had that. And it was in the New England colonies, middle colonies. So the lessons are very focused, but without just going into excruciatingly boring detail either. <laughs> um, some of the other topics in the first book um, goes into the Revolutionary War, the Federal Era, Nationalist Era, Reform era, um, and then in the reform area, so we're talking before Civil War, slightly before Civil War, they talk about the quality of life at the time. Um, what our national literature was going on and why we had a big increase in literature at the time, the technologies that were involved with that, which I didn't know. I never made those connections. Um, religious reforms, um, artist rendering of the American landscape at the time, um, a uh, changing landscape, so the environment of the mid 1860s or mid 1800s. So I really, I really become a big fan of this curriculum. I didn't know, I, I shouldn't have been surprised because we love everything critical thinking company, but I was. Um, another pro, and this is something that I talked about on Instagram stories not long ago. Um, the answer key is really, really good. <laughs> and I know that sounds ridiculous, but when you are grading you know, with high school, you're grading a lot. And so having a really good answer key is something that I, that I think is a good pro. Um, they, it's clear, easy to read, not too much, but it's got the information there. For questions that are multiple choice or written, they cut it, like, for the written question at the end, 
um, they just give you the key points of things that you need to look for in the answer. Right. Without having it like a sample writing, they just give you things to look for. A couple cons. One, like I said, it doesn't really dig into the events. So if you have a student that doesn't have much of a grasp of you know, the major events of the Civil War, for example, this might not be a great choice without supplementing. You could easily supplement it. PBS, for example, has a great Civil War series that Ken Burns did that would be great for high school age. So just be aware that if you have a student who's doesn't have a good grasp of different, um, kind of the main the overarching history, then you may need to make sure you supplement well on those areas. The other thing that is a con is that there is not enough material in here for you to get your 120 hours of schoolwork time to count as a full high school credit. Now for us, that's fine because we didn't want this to be the whole thing. I like to have a variety of things. She, for history this year, um, is doing several, we, she has an audiobook each time, each unit. Um, it's a historical fiction. I just choose different ones. And we do a variety of lectures from great courses plus, as well as videos from um, Crash Course on YouTube, um, American Experience. She will start, now that she's getting ready to start, 20th century, there is a series called The Century um, that Peter Jennings did for ABC. It is fantastic. We've, I just, we watched him a few years ago for U.S. History, so we've had it on YouTube. I will try to link everything that I mentioned. If I, if you want one of these resources that I mentioned and I forgot to link it, just leave me a comment. Um, so she'll do that. The American Experience series from PBS. There are all kinds of topics. So we've pulled several of those. She just watched The Men Who Built America for the end of this book and the be end of book one, beginning of book two. It was a time period. Um, that series is on PBS. No, on, it's from the History Channel. It's, you can find it on Amazon Prime. And it includes profiles of men like Bear Bell, Carnegie, um, I'm drawing a blank on who else. She just watched that series with it, and she really enjoyed it. My boys, who are younger, they are 10 and 12, really enjoyed that series, too. Um, so those are some of the, of course, are some of the things we've added in. She's also doing um, each unit. She has a list. I found a list from NPR of, like, the top 100 songs of American history. I forget what it's called. So she's doing that, and then she has some art that she does each unit with it. So we, you'll definitely need a supplement if you, um, in order to get enough credit hours for your account as a U.S. history credit. Um, if you have a student who enjoys kind of like putting pieces together and the whys of history and not just the big things, this is be a really good choice. Like I said, we did Story of the World um, when she was younger, and I feel like this is a really good next step, especially if you don't want to do her, um, the ones she does that are high school, adult level. These, yeah, I feel like this is, because it's still kind of the same thing where she's kind of putting pieces together and figuring it all out. And so, uh, you know, how, how everything relates, I think this is a good kind of older kid resource with a similar approach. It's op totally open and go. There's nothing I have to prepare. It takes me five to ten minutes to grade for a week's worth of lessons. So super quick grading. Um, and then like I mentioned, those supplements that we've used, I will also try to include a list of um, the audiobooks that she has done with it. At the later in the year, I am going to do a full video about her U.S. history year and mention all the resources. So if 
If you're watching this and that video is already up, I'll put it up there. Um, and if not, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss it when it does. So I'm gonna flip the camera down now and we will take a look inside the book. So the table of contents. And then it gives you a nice little over, the, a teacher overview of kind of what is in each part what to look for and then it starts so each section will include um, an introduction to the section a map and then a nice little timeline showing where it all where the events in this um, section fit in like what kind of, just kind of gives the whole range sometimes it'll start a little before and go a little after Okay, so a sample lesson, like I said, a um, couple pages of reading, nice maps. They always just put in little fun little facts, which I enjoy. And then the questions, or the, the multiple choice and short written, short answer questions, and then the written question. Each section has about five lessons in it. And so here's one of the review lessons that will be in it. Some of these I just grade for completion, and those I just mark five out of five, or, you know, if she did it all five out of five. Other ones I will grade um, for correct answers. So um, they had, she had to put it in the three countries and then kind of just fill in the details of where they the different facts about each one. Some of the reviews at the end will be um, vocabulary reviews. So this one takes it for a Venn diagram. Um, I really like that there's a variety of activities for them. There'll be geography reviews. Obviously this is one we skipped. And then this is like the first one I showed you. But here was a vocabulary review. Again, we skipped this one. Um, so it just took all the vocabulary from the first set and matched them up. There are several of these and I really like, I really like these. And we usually do them. So now, section two. And so once we start having presidents, it will include what presidents on here are in that unit or in that section and then there was a bonus activity um, of kind of quotes from Emerson and I just we she went over it read them and then we picked a few and talked about them and we do a lot of oral discussion in our class and that's um that's, this book lends itself well to that because there's not only so much to discuss from the content, but also the different review questions and the written questions. So a look, quick look in the table of contents of book two. The format of the book is still the same. When I did, when I was going through this to mark down her assignments, I wrote down some of the major events and people so that I can look for videos to go along with it. So this one starts in the gold or the gilded age. Goes on through that. Great Depression. World War II. Now, as you can see, <laughs> from the 70s through today, kind of get um, condensed quite a bit but we spent a lot of time on 20th century last year for world history including in the u.s plus with current events talk and stuff i'm not so concerned about that but you may want to supplement for it if you are curriculum shopping you can see my spotlight playlist on the screen right now and if you're looking for more videos about history that playlist is also on my screen